From Biden to Harris, big tech to Bitcoin, it has been a big and bumpy week. I'm Lisa Bernhard with Reuters, and here to sum it all up for us is Anna Rathburn of CBiz. All right, Anna, let's start with the latest inflation data out today, the Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index from the Commerce Department, which showed that the annual inflation rate is down to 2.5% progress, but still above the Federal Reserve's 2% target. So what struck you about the numbers in terms of what prices have come down and what may still need to come down? Well, it's actually not bad news. I know we're not at the Fed's target, but I don't think the Fed is waiting for it to be at 2%. Um, so this was actually a really good number today. Um, most of that, that you know, good news, PCE news, it was actually from the goods sector, which was expected. And the services sector, which was expected to be sticky, remained a bit sticky. But it was sticky at a pretty low rate of 0.2% month over month. So two consecutive months of sticky inflation at 0.2% is not a bad number. So I think that this was actually pretty good news for the Fed. All right. In other economic data, yesterday we got the latest GDP figure for the second quarter, and it showed economic growth was stronger than expected. The first quarter before had been trending lower. So was there any weakness behind that strong number that we saw for the second quarter yesterday? Yeah, 2.8% annualized GDP growth for second quarter. Wow. I mean, the headline number certainly points toward a soft landing narrative. But we have to ask our, ourselves a question, what are we looking for from a GDP growth number? We want to be able to know if the, G, if, if the American economy is going to continue to grow at that pace or faster. Is the momentum growing? That is ultimately what we want to know. So if we look under the hood, we're not finding too much of that evidence. Uh, first of all, um, government spending came in at a very, very high con uh, in contribution. Um, but that doesn't bode well for private sector growth. Um, and also the inventory part of the GDP growth was too high. So if you're looking at just private sector growth, the number comes in way below 2%. And that isn't necessarily good news uh, for the coming quarter. So that's interesting. All right. So next week, the Federal Reserve meets for its two day policy meeting. And we're going to play pretend here that you are on that committee. You are on that policy committee. And I want you to put all this data together for us, paint a picture of the economy and how that all plays into a potential rate cut for September and maybe three this year and not two. Well, so if I take many, many steps back and look at the big picture, I think the American economy is going toward an inflection point. The question here is, do we slow down a little bit or do we slow down a lot? Because we are seeing fringes of the economy slowing down. Labor market slowing down. The credit market is slowing down. There's stress on the American wallets. Um, the University of Michigan report came out today. Consumer sentiment is low because prices still remain high. These are still challenges that are not going away. And they're becoming more and more pronounced in the aggregated uh, uh, numbers that tell us about the health of the American economy. So. If I were a Fed member, I would definitely cut in September. I might even cut next week in July, but we know that the Fed likes the signal. So maybe next week we get a signal for how the rate cuts might come. Okay, let's go back to the beginning of the week and President Biden stepping out of the race, Kamala Harris, the vice president, now the presumptive Democratic nominee prior to that. We had the Trump trade after the assassination attempt on Donald Trump, where markets looked like they were pricing in a Donald Trump presidency. Do we still have a Trump trade? What is that? And is there a Harris trade? Uh, so the Trump trade... Uh, or the so-called Trump trade, is what we saw at the end of 2016 after Mr. Trump unexpectedly won the presidency. What we saw was rally of small caps, rally of value-oriented stocks, and yields going up. Uh, from a stock market perspective, we would call that a junk rally, right? So this is not a based on fundamentals at all. And that is sort of what we saw um, after the assassination attempt um, earlier this month. Now it's a little bit difficult to know 
if that is a pure Trump trade, because just two days before on July 11th, we had a soft CPI number uh, that had the markets expecting a Fed cut in September. And small caps were already rallying for two days before uh, that fateful weekend. Um, so it's a little bit of a con confounding factor. Um, I think that uh, there is excitement about potentially a Trump administration, uh, second admi administration, uh, maybe being more friendly to businesses, maybe extending the tax cuts beyond 2025, all of those things. But those are very, very speculative. And as for a potential Harris trade, we will have to get to know what is actually on her platform, specifically with regards to the sunsetting of the tax cuts at the end of 2025, for the markets to even start to price in what that is and the probability of her win. Okay, I'm going to have you take us into the weekend now because Donald Trump is headlining a Bitcoin conference. And he at first criticized Bitcoin. Now he's coming into this conference sort of billing himself as the crypto president, potential crypto president. Do you see this as another step that kind of helps to popularize cryptocurrencies? Do you see this as a way for Donald Trump to raise more money from wealthy crypto owners such as the Winklevoss twins? What do you think? <laughs> Well, crypto has changed a lot since 2019, right? I mean, it was a little more than, um, you know, a discussion point. Uh, there was a fan base in 2019, uh, but now it is in some circles considered an asset class. And certainly some investors do look at it as an uncorrelated asset to stocks and bonds and certainly the U.S. currency. Um, now, with regards to Mr. Trump, I understand that he is accepting donations um, in cryptocurrency. So, um, you know, if you were a presidential candidate, you might have reasons to support that. But um, Going back to his comment in 2019 about it being sort of made out of thin air and being concerned about its volatility, those concerns still remain. So if you know donations are accepted in crypto or in Bitcoin, um, there may be some volatility in his, um, in his funds to support uh, this campaign.